The old house at the end of the street had always been abandoned, or so everyone thought. You'd walk past it a hundred times, its windows dark and empty, the paint peeling from the walls, the porch sagging under the weight of years. No one in the neighborhood talked about it, and those who did never had anything good to say. It was just there, a fixture of decay, as though it had been forgotten by the world. One evening, after a particularly long day, you found yourself walking home later than usual. The sun had set, and a thick fog had rolled in, making the familiar street feel strange and eerie. As you passed by the old house, something caught your eye. It was faint, just a flicker of movement in one of the upstairs windows. You stopped, squinting through the fog. The house had always been dark, lifeless, but now there was a light, a dim, flickering light coming from one of the upper windows. You stood there, staring, your breath catching in your throat. For a moment, you thought it must be your imagination, but then you saw it again. A shadow, moving behind the window. Your heart skipped a beat. No one lived there. No one had lived there for years. You could feel the hairs on the back of your neck stand on end as the shadow moved again, slowly, deliberately, as if it knew you were watching. You tried to convince yourself it was just a trick of the light, maybe the reflection of a passing car, but the street was empty. There was no one around, no sound except the soft rustling of the wind through the trees. And then the shadow stopped. It stood there, perfectly still, right in front of the window. You could feel its eyes on you, even though you couldn't see a face, just the dark silhouette of something or someone watching you. You took a step back, your heart racing. You weren't sure what to do. Part of you wanted to turn and run, but another part of you, an uneasy curiosity, kept you rooted onto the spot. You stood there, frozen, staring up at the window, waiting for something to happen. And then slowly, the light in the windows went out. The shadow disappeared, swallowed by the darkness of the house. You blinked, your mind struggling to make sense of what you'd just seen. For a long moment, you stood there in the fog, staring at the now dark window, half expecting the shadow to reappear. But it didn't. Finally, you shook yourself from the trance and hurried home, telling yourself it was just a trick of the light, that your mind had been playing tricks on you after a long day, but deep down, you knew something wasn't right. That night, you couldn't sleep. Every time you closed your eyes, you saw the shadow in the window. You could feel its gaze, cold and distant, as though it was still watching you, waiting for you to come closer. The house had always been empty, hadn't it? No one had lived there for as long as you could remember, but now, something was there. The next morning, you couldn't shake the feeling of unease that had settled over you. The house at the end of the street loomed in your thoughts, its dark windows staring back at you whenever you closed your eyes. You tried to ignore it, go about your day as usual, but the thought of the shadow in the window clung to you like a dark cloud. That evening, as you walked home again, you found yourself glancing toward the house. The fog had returned, thick and heavy, and the street lights barely cut through the gloom. You quickened your pace, your breath coming in shallow gasps as you approached the house. And then you saw it again, the light in the upstairs window. Your heart raced as you stared at the house, the same dim, flickering light coming from the same window. The shadow was there again, moving slowly behind the glass, just as it had the night before. But this time, it didn't stop at the window. It moved closer. You took a step back, your blood running cold as the shadow seemed to approach the glass, its dark form growing larger, more defined. You could feel the weight of its gaze, heavy and oppressive, as though it was drawing you in. And then it reached out. A hand, pale, thin, and unnaturally long, pressed against the glass, leaving a faint, smudged outline on the window. Your heart pounded in your chest as you watched, frozen in place, unable to tear your eyes away. The hand moved slowly, its fingers tapping gently against the glass, as though beckoning you closer. You turned and ran. You didn't stop until you were safely inside your house. The door locked behind you, your heart still racing in your chest. You stood there for a long time, your back pressed against the door, listening to the sound of your own breathing, waiting for something, anything, to happen. But the night was silent. 
The next morning, you told yourself it was over, that you wouldn't go near that house again. But as the day wore on, the memory of the shadow in the window gnawed at you, pulling at the edges of your mind. You had to know what was inside. That evening, just as the sun was setting, you found yourself standing in front of the old house. The fog was thicker than ever, and the street was eerily quiet. You hesitated at the gate, your heart pounding in your chest, but the pull was too strong. You stepped inside. The front door was unlocked. The house was dark, the air inside cold and stale. You moved slowly through the rooms, your footsteps echoing in the silence. Every creak on the floorboard sent a shiver down your spine, but you pressed on, making your way upstairs. The door to the room with the window was slightly ajar. You pushed it open. The room was empty. No furniture, no decorations, just bare walls and a single window, cracked and dirty. The light outside was fading fast, casting long shadows across the floor. And then you saw it. On the glass, faint but unmistakable, was the outline of a hand pressed against the window, just as it had been the night before. Behind you, the floor creaked.